after the failed invasion of Earth by the faction known as the Quashfart failed miserably. So bad, in fact, that they were not able to take and hold any land. They were not able to strike anything on the ground outside of a few shots with their own orbital bombardments. And they also lost two of the three battleships they had brought with them. They decided they needed to talk to the humans. They decided to do their version of suing for peace, which is basically, you showed us how good you are. Now we want you to join us. So basically, we kicked your ass, now you work for us. The humans were not happy. Irate at the idea that they would simply join them, they demanded that the invaders leave. But before they do, there would be compensation given. Not only would the humans return all live personnel that they found as a sign of good faith over the talks, but due to the lack of personnel, equipment, and infrastructure, all their technology must be shared. Along with that, they must leave the system and not return, but they will not be taking any of the ships that had crashed on the planet with them. As once they have crashed on the planet, they belong to humanity. The Kushfart immediately responded with, You could have all this if you simply join us. Be part of our alliance our faction, and you would definitely become part of the most powerful faction. Denied was all they received. Every single time was with a thump on the table. The humans were so mad that you could see that they had to tell their own guards to hold back. There was no hesitation, really. They wanted these things off their planet and out of their sector. They gave them seven planetary rotations to leave. That's one week. During that time, the Kushfart had left the planet, but they wanted to leave something behind to make sure that humans did not decide to turn their own rage against them. They left probes, probes deep inside their own system. Some of them's in the asteroid belt, some of them inside the rings around several of their planets, or simply rotating around a few of their moons. They watched, surprised at what humanity has done. They would believe that humanity would spend its time grieving and trying to reinforce the one planet. But what they saw changed their whole idea of this new bipedal species that seem to be very good at doing one thing, that's fighting. Humanity began to build out at such a rapid speed they didn't even think it was possible. A few weeks and a few months and they had built out farther than their own moon. They used AI to help speed things up. It seems as though they already had plans for these, but with the new introduction of technologies that were there, it seemed to be sped up to the nth degree. Though they watched and the technology was clumsy at first, it was very efficient as it didn't stop unless it needed repair. It just kept going to retrieve all the materials they needed. They began to harvest from the asteroid belt and even all the way to their own Ord cloud. They began to take in all sorts of materials. Fleet yards were rapidly built near their own moon Luna and close to the fourth planet in their system. And with this, small ships began to be made. Small ships that could do something that the Kashfart were amazed. These ships should have been too small for any type of FTL, but they were so small in that they used a type of jump drive. They didn't warp in like you would think, trying to slow down slowly or trying to use inertial dampers to slow down quickly. They would simply blink in and out it was amazing to see. However, there was an issue. Suddenly, one day, as they were watching, every single probe went dark simultaneously. They would like to look into the humans, but there was conflict right now. Another faction, known as the Pulsatir, they were starting to push hard on the Kweshvart's border. Unable to commit forces against the humans, they decided to just leave them be. If the humans wanted to be left alone after everything they lost, they're just going to leave them the hell alone. 
They knew, eventually, there was a third faction. The Deshnevark would have to deal with the humans soon. They were heading and expanding in that direction. They were taking other systems with minimal trouble. And they were also the strongest of all the factions. Why the Pulsatir decided that they would fight up against the Kashvart was confusing as neither of them were really able to outfight the other. But the Deshnevirk were. When it was confirmed that the Deshnevirk were heading towards human space, the Kreshvart faction laughed, laughed hysterically. They laughed as they had so much trouble against an unprepared humanity and lost so much. And now humanity was building up their arms and munitions, had all sorts of senses arrays, and were ready, preparing for another invasion. And how would even the strongest faction known be able to face against prepared humans? Though the Deshnevirk were the strongest faction, they were not going to be strong enough to win against that. Not without incurring incredibly difficult losses. The Kweshvart waited to hear the reports, but usually the reports were simply rumors. But then again, the rumor mill was always the best place to get your information. Four years after the Kweshvart had been forced out of human space. Four years since the invasion. And one year since the drones of the Kweshvart went silent, the Deshnevirk were ready to attack, and they would be soon. Those around the Kreshvark leadership were silent. They waited. They wondered how it would be, as they could see on their sensors the Deshnevirk fleet beginning to move in. The Deshnevirk fleet, being smart, did not go directly to the center of the soul system. Instead, they did as most do, which is jump to the edge of the system, and slowly bring their vessels in as a show of force, showing that they could not be stopped and they would simply steamroll anyone who came close. As they entered the edge of the system, they saw civilian vessels immediately turn and running back to different planets. They saw what looked like drones continue to work, not even caring the slightest bit that there was a massive fleet floating across the entire sector. The human fleet was immediately mobilized, and the defense grids were activated. There was so much going on that the Deshnevirk could not figure out what was going to happen, as just like before, it was almost impossible to lock in on a single line of communication, as there were just so many. The Deshnevirk fleet began to advance from the outer system orbit and headed directly towards Earth. There was absolutely no question this was the planet they were aiming for, and this seemed to make all the actions of preparations on Earth, Mars, Venus, Luna, everywhere take center stage and make everyone move with an extreme amount of purpose. When reaching the seventh planet's orbit, they received a message. They were confused at this. But they were happy that this new species was smart enough to surrender. So they simply put it on, even though the comms officer was looking very confused, but would not question an order from their senior. It was a very mechanical voice. You have entered restricted space. Turn your vessels around and leave peacefully, and you will not be engaged. Continue to advance with hostile intent, and you will be given no quarter. This is your only warning. The message simply repeated over and over again. It wasn't long at all before the leadership realized this was just a recording. This was just a warning. It must have been automated from when they entered the system. They listened to it, looked at each other, and all began to burst out laughing in their own particular ways. Some of them bounced antennae, other ones flipped tails, some of them fluttered wings. All the different species in that faction thought it was absolutely hilarious that an upstart species would be telling them to leave peacefully. In other words, if you don't come in peace, you will leave in pieces. Analyzing the transmission, they realized that this was extremely technologically based. 
as in the voice print itself, seemed like it was coming from some sort of technology and not a real person. They believed that this meant that it was a tech-based species. Hmm. Do they think they stand a chance? I mean, tech-based species have been met before and they're usually easy to beat, so... But then again, this might be a great addition to our forces. All the typical conversation for those who have all sorts of arrogance and stupidity wrapped around their head and shoved up their... As the Deshnevik forces continued, they waited until they got within the six planets rotation, so they sent their own message. You will surrender, and you will be allowed to serve under us. Fight against us, and you will lose, and we will simply make you slaves. This is your only choice. Surrender and serve, or fight and be in chains. There was no response from any human ship, any human satellite, any human planet. They were surprised at this. This was extremely inappropriate as far as diplomacy goes. Any species would at least have the courtesy to respond, even if the courtesy was a good old-fashioned bite me. So the fleet just continued to advance. Around Earth, the fleet assembled, and the Deshnevik forces looked and were confused. The hell type of design ships are those? They didn't figure it out. They were trying to look at, see what type of markings they may have. There were no markings. They were of similar design, of course, but all were slightly different in one way or another. There was no central theme to the way they were designed. The sharp angles is like they were just a whole bunch of bricks thrown together. This was confusing to them, as there was no actually aesthetically pleasing parts to the ships. This was common for species that had just started reaching into space, as that would mean their ships are very practical. But those that had spent a lot of time spacefaring started to put more luxury into their ships. And this could be seen on the Deshnevark fleet as it continued to advance and was so confident in their victory, they barely charged any weapons. Only a few ones just to show that they were serious so they would say. Given only a few years to prepare, Earth forces were pretty pitiful in comparison when you simply looked at numbers. They only had one functioning battleship at this point. Nine destroyers, 12 frigates, 58 corvettes, but they did have about 700 drone fighters. These drone fighters were used at up close and personal ranges as they could fire in every single direction and though they didn't need a pilot, meant that they could fly like a missile, pulling G-forces that the other ships just could not handle without turning all of their crew into chunky salsa. The Deshnevik themselves brought in a full dreadnought, seven battleships, which was more than double the three battleships that their predecessors had brought. 16 destroyers, 27 frigates, but they did not bring any corvettes for landing, or fighters for that matter. This was more a show of force, as they did not want to waste any time actually landing on the planet. They believed that just landing a couple of frigates it was a good enough show of force, as frigates themselves were light enough to actually take off from a planet's gravity well. The Deshnevik fleet begins to power the rest of its weapons right as it was getting an odd reading. On many of the ships, the operators of the sensors were starting to yell out how they were starting to get strange readings. Something was off, but the command didn't even think anything was able to touch them. Suddenly, all the ships in a certain area were yanked extremely fast towards each other, so much so that anyone not buckled in was thrown up against the bulkheads and walls of their ship. They couldn't figure out why they were moving so fast, but they knew they were speeding up. They were yanked sideways or diagonal, but they were all heading for each other. The ships tried desperately to fire their docking thrusters any way to slow themselves down, but it was too late and there was too much force. They began to crash into each other, slamming, twisting ships around. Several of the battleships crashed into each other. The dreadnought was fighting like crazy to keep itself away as it was being pulled backwards. They turned their engines on absolute full so they could try to get away. 
four of the battleships were crushed into each other, and then suddenly there was a massive explosion. Massive so much that it threw the ship sideways and all over the place. Parts of them started to rip into the rest of the fleet. It was an absolute massacre. Another battleship went down in the fighting and another one was disabled partially. Over half of their destroyers were completely destroyed in the resulting explosion as large pieces of ships came crashing down into them. Even though destroyers carry a lot of weapons, they do not have a lot of armor to protect them from anything like this. The frigates being farther out survived all right, but 11 out of the 27 were completely and totally gone. Just gone. The fleet was in absolute chaos at this, as they were still trying to right themselves, trying to make sure that their dampeners were working, seeing if their systems were operational, as they continued to get smashed into by different pieces of other ships. They looked out some of their viewports and they could see bodies flying all over the place into the debris. Many of them couldn't believe that they had received so many losses all of a sudden. Most of the crews that had been hit by debris flying from the battleships that had been torn apart were hit so hard that again the dampeners couldn't maintain anything and they were simply turned up against the walls, against the ceiling, against the floors, through the hatches, down the hallways, and they crumpled onto their floors. Many of the bodies began to float as their artificial gravities would simply fail. At that point, the human corvettes seemed to come in out of nowhere, but they were far enough around the flanks that no one could figure out what they were doing. They weren't trying to fire. They hadn't turned to fire any main guns. The only thing that was up was point defense systems. And this was, of course, effective against any type of missile or torpedo that might be going at them. But what the hell were they doing? They were just outside of range of any projectiles. But just as they were targeted by the energy cannons, they simply blinked away. They were gone. They didn't fire anything. What were they doing? Nobody could figure out what was going on. And then suddenly the destroyers jumped into the area, parking themselves right inside the formation. This allowed them to bring in a whole bunch of their own weapons and began to fire, making an unholy mess of the exterior of the formation. Firing all their weapons in every single direction, having to rotate their ships to try and bring their main gun to bear as fast as possible. But by the time they did, whatever they were trying to aim at was usually already in pieces or adrift. The Corvettes had done their job by giving the sensor data which allowed the destroyers to do a precision jump without jumping into debris itself. Had they done that, the hull of the destroyers might have simply exploded. As many of the enemy frigates on the outskirts of the formation decided to turn and try to face on the destroyers, they found out too late that the human Corvettes had turned around and were now on their flanks just inside effective range and began to fire away. With that, behind the destroyers, frigates jumped in and they fired all their torpedoes and released all their drones in a matter of moments. It looked like you had quite literally kicked a hornet's nest with the amount of drones that suddenly drove out of the bays. Along with that, torpedoes were constantly swaying left, right, up, down, and center flipping around, finding their mark, and blowing another ship apart. Some of them hitting the engine compartment, blowing it off. Others targeting the bridge. Others trying to just hit something. But they were still outnumbered. The frigates would not stick around. As soon as they dropped their ordnance, they were gone. They were out. And now the numbers were pretty level. But they had a big, big problem. And that big problem was a dreadnought which was having its own fun time targeting the human destroyers. The human destroyers were still firing away, and as the dreadnought moved its main guns around, which took a surprisingly long time, it didn't think for a moment that it should be targeting the largest of the human fleet. The battleship began to radiate a massive amount of energy as it built up its huge energy cannon. The cannon that was built around basically 
becoming the keel of the ship itself. It fired its main energy cannon and skewered the dreadnought from stem to stern, cooking through it in a matter of two seconds. With this, the battleship had to close its port for the weapon, as the weapon itself made the center of the battleship glow, a glow that could be seen all the way on Luna. The sensor data shared between the frigates, the destroyers, the corvettes, had allowed the battleship to fire a precision shot, though this could only be done once every about 40 minutes, as the weapon itself needed to cool. It was an energy weapon after all. It was still enough to take out their dreadnought. And with also more of the sensor data, there was another energy spike from the battleship, and it blinked into the formation right where one of the nuke bombs had exploded. The gravimetrics had pulled them in tight, then a nuclear explosion had blasted them away, and now there was a void. A void big enough in the formation for the battleship to show up, and the battleship, already turning its guns, knowing exactly where to fire, blinked into existence right there with seemingly a shine to it, and then it began to fire. With every shot, it would take down another ship, and the enemy forces numbers were dwindling very, very quickly. The corvettes could not keep up to the fire of the enemy frigates and simply pulled away. The last of the battleships was taken down by the human battleship. The last of the ships from the enemy fleet tried to run, but they couldn't. They couldn't figure out why. They couldn't spin up their warp engines, why they couldn't get them moving. They desperately tried to spin up whatever they could, trying to get away from whatever these creatures were. They didn't even have a chance to see what they were fighting. They were scared. It was like the gods of death had come to meet them. What the hell was going on? Then suddenly they realized that the battleship itself, once it blinked in, it had started to release an electromagnetic signal that created a type of interdiction field that did not allow any type of FTL travel to happen. With this, they really realized they were screwed. And the battle ended. After 19 minutes. Four years of buildup, and the battle was over in 19 minutes. This surprised everyone, even the humans themselves. What surprised them even more is the very few survivors that were there were actually saved by these strange bipeds. They were, of course, scared to death at what they saw as these, whatever they were, came in in giant mechanical suits. Wait, weren't they technical? Are these what they are? Are they actual robots? Is that what they are? They couldn't tell. No one could hear them talk. No one could see a face. No one saw them move except for extreme mechanical precision in the way they were grabbing. Many of them tried to run, found that these, whatever they were, had surprising speed and could catch them very quick. They tried to fight away, but they were incredibly strong. What the hell were these? Are these just some sort of drones that they sent in to get them? But they realized that they couldn't fight back. They were brought to their own detention center. Out of the entire flotilla, 187 survivors. They were surprised, though. They were treated surprisingly well. They believed that they would be put in shackles or put in interrogation, which was basically torture. But instead, they were given good food. Better food than they had before. Clean beds. They were surprised at this, is that most of them still had to sleep on a floor. And they were given medical care? This was unheard of. They were defeated. If you were defeated, if your species was broken by a battle, if you didn't immediately surrender, then you were simply a slave. And you were treated as such. After a day, another one of these massive armored bipeds walked in. It was not carrying weapons, but it seemed to have its own security detail, which carried weapons almost as large as its own torso. It walked up, and the final surviving officer was separated from the group and brought to a strange room. 
a room designed very coldly. There was no amenities, no pictures or paintings, just this strange gray everywhere. On one side of the walls was a reflective surface that he could see himself. He saw that he had survived the battle, but he wasn't exactly going to be attracting any mates anytime soon. One of his antennae was missing, and he was scorched on one other side. Part of his leg was basically snapped in half and was being held together by some sort of splint, though it was a strange device that seemed to help his body heal much, much faster, which was surprising. Everything about this was surprising. As this biped sat down in front of him, the officer simply asked, are you even alive? Or are, are you a drone? Are you one of the hive drones? With that, the man reached up, raised his visor, and with an emotionless, extremely stoic face, he looked at the young lieutenant. I'm alive, yes. And if you would like to stay alive yourself, I strongly suggest that you tell us everything about your faction. The lieutenant, seemingly defiant, realized that if he gave up even the smallest bit of information, he would be taking a dump on his own pride as an officer. Along with that, he would be betraying everyone. If I choose death, he said with the most defiant sound he could make, even though he was ready to relieve himself at that moment. The soldiers on either side instantly raised their rifles. The commander raised his hand. What the hell are you doing? What are you doing? You shoot now, you're going to go right through the bulkhead. I'd rather not get vented today. Idiots. The soldiers seemed to turn and look at each other, lowered their weapons, and then pulled out very long blades. The commander got up from his seat and backed up against the far wall as the two soldiers came around the table. The commander then spoke, looking directly into the lieutenant's eyes. Take your time, but make sure you don't get any blood on my boots. The soldiers walked to the prisoner and raised one of his six arms, and just as he started to raise the knife up to the arm, the prisoner asked, C Can I change my mind about which option? <laughs> With that, the two soldiers stopped, seemed to look at each other, and then looked back at the commander. Without breaking eye contact with the young lieutenant, the commander looked, and they could see a small grin slowly work its way up the man's face.